So you may be getting into instant photography for the first time, or maybe you're just wondering what's the best instant film camera to buy, but you're getting overwhelmed by all the options. Well, guess what? You're in luck. You're in the right place because I'm gonna break down my favorite and best cameras that I like to use going in to the next year. So enough talking about it, let's dive right on in. You know the type of guy that was a jock in high school but ended up becoming a huge nerd? You know, someone that's not afraid to make a fool of themselves on the internet. And someone that likes to shoot Polaroid a little too much. Did I say huge nerd? You know, just an ordinary, everyday guy. Well, that's me. I'm just another Chris. Now that the year is winding down, it's time for my annual best cameras to buy for the following year. And this is the 2023 edition. Which camera to pick up in the new year? I own and I have tested thoroughly many, many cameras over the years. And I'm gonna break it down for you and tell you which ones are my favorite and the best ones that I have used. Now, there's gonna be a lot of cameras and information thrown your way and I'm gonna do my best to consolidate things so it's as simple as possible. So to do so, I'm gonna break it down into a few categories. First category is we're gonna go over Instax cameras from mini film, square film, and wide film. And then in the next category, we're gonna switch over to Polaroid. And in the Polaroid category, it can get a little bit confusing because there is so many. <laughs> I'm gonna break it into modern cameras and vintage cameras. And I may just throw in a couple honorable mentions throughout. So first up, let's go over some Instax cameras. And we're gonna start things off with the Instax Mini Line. The Instax Mini Line is the most popular film stock to date. There's so many cameras out there for it and so many people shooting it. It's also a gateway drug. <laughs> It'll probably lead you into more and more cameras and different formats. And I always tell people, start with an Instax Mini 8 or above. Honestly, they're pretty much all the same cameras, at least made by Fuji. There are a few others like these right here that have been made over the years and I, I thoroughly love them for their uniqueness. But for instance, this is an Instax Mini 9 camera they're really the same. They have the same settings, same features. They shoot the Instax Mini Film, and the cameras are not expensive at all. If you were to buy one brand new, they're about $60, but if you head on over to Facebook Marketplace, OfferUp, eBay, sometimes even Amazon, you can find these as low as 20 bucks and even like $10 in the aftermarket. Unless you want to get some of these like more themed type cameras, like these will range wildly up to uh, several hundred dollars sometimes for these. I just have it here for fun because it looks cool on camera. <laughs> I've done videos on all of these cameras, so if you wanna check it out, there's links in the description below. This is where I start with my Instax cameras. Now, honorable mention for the Instax mini cameras. There is one new camera that had, it's been out for this past year, but it's a hybrid of film and digital, so I just wanna to touch on it briefly. And that is the Fuji Instax mini Evo. It is a digital camera that has the ability to print its photos, and it's a Bluetooth printer which is kind of fun too. You can connect your phone to it and print your phone photos, which is really, really nice. It's a great camera if you are just starting into instant photography because you don't have to worry about mostly the normal things you would have to worry about when you shoot instant photography. You can just shoot away on this because you're, you're probably really good at shooting with your phone. Well, that's what this, this is the same sort of concept. However, it does come with a hefty price tag. It is $200 if you can find one. They're very, very popular at the recording of this video and they tend to be scalped hard. <laughs> Once they go up for sale, they tend to sell out really fast and almost double in the aftermarket. But I just wanted to touch on it real quick because it does exist and I actually really, really love this camera. It is pretty fantastic. So let's move on over to the Instax Square cameras. And I got two right here, but the one I would recommend would be this one. This is the Fuji Instax SQ6. This camera is fan freaking tastic. I'm actually still working on a review currently, but by the time you're watching this video in the future, it's probably already done, and I'll be sure to link it down below when it's ready. This camera is fantastic. Previous years, I have recommended people to the Lomography Square Glass. However, this year I was able to try out the SQ6 and pleasantly surprised. It has a lot of cool features. Self-timer, you're able to turn the flash on and off. You have variable distances for focusing. This thing is slim, fits in a camera bag beautifully. The only downside to this, it does use some specialty type batteries just like this one. They're a CR2 battery, I believe, and they're not as common and they're a little bit more of expensive battery. But other than that, this thing gets my seal of approval. It's fantastic. I mean, it even has a tripod mount on the bottom. Most instant cameras don't have that. So this is really cool and this one is my pick for 2023. Next up, I've got the Fuji Instax Wide Format. And I got these two cameras here, 
and these are great. This one's made by Lomography, and this one is made by Fuji. The Lomography comes packed with a lot of features and a little shutter remote button that doubles as a cap. But nine times out of 10, when I'm reaching for an Instax wide camera, I go to this almost every single time. It, it just works so well. I've been rocking this camera for the last three, four years, and it's going strong. I don't know if I've ever replaced the batteries. Nope, these are the same freaking batteries. I have shot hundreds and hundreds of photos on this camera, and I've never replaced the batteries since the day I got it. Thick with 23 Cs, just like, this guy. Wide cameras, unfortunately, have that problem and being huge. So there is that. Not that this isn't a good camera. It really is. It is kind of harder to find these days. So I tell people to pick up a Instax wide 200 and above. I bought this on eBay for $20 or so. This is the one I tell people to go track down and find. But honestly, a 210, 300, whatever, they're really going to be the same and you're going to have a great time. Honorable mention for the wide, and that is the Mint Instacon RF70. If you got the cash and you love a headache and a challenge, there is this available. This thing will run you a hefty price of a thousand dollars or so. But it's worth mentioning that it does exist. It's a full, well, mostly full manual Instax wide camera. You got control over your shutter speed and your aperture, and it is a rangefinder, so you have some manual focusing abilities, but you don't look through the lens to focus when you look through a rangefinder. Honorable mention, it does exist if you got the cash and you wanna put up with the headache. Now let's move on over to the Polaroid category. And this one's gonna be broken down into a couple sections. We're gonna talk about modern day Polaroid cameras and also vintage Polaroid cameras. There's a lot of them because Polaroid's been around since the 70s. So they have made quite a bit of cameras over the years. But I'm gonna simplify it for you, don't worry. Let's start with modern day cameras and let's kick it off with the Polaroid Go. Polaroid Go is a category of its own. It, there's only one camera that's ever been made and it, there's only one film format to shoot with it. It's pretty quick, pretty easy. It's a fun little camera. It's sort of pocketable depending on what clothes you're wearing. <laughs> you can throw it in a small bag and you'd be good to go. Cute little camera. We'll love to see this be expanded upon next year and some other camera designs. But either way, this is cool. I recommend it, it is fun. Now let's talk Polaroid I-type cameras, which are under the modern day cameras. The brief history is why these exist is when Polaroid went bankrupt and they were bought out by the Impossible Project. And then Impossible Project turned into Polaroid Originals and now it's just called Polaroid. And they released some new cameras once they did that, which was only as recent as of 2016, I believe. So these are really the only cameras that they've made under the Polaroid name since the bankruptcy, since 2008. The only camera to stay away from, I could tell you right now, is do not buy the Polaroid Now Plus. Uh, I've done multiple videos as to why. I even talked to Polaroid directly on a Zoom call about this. Yeah, I'll leave links to all those videos down below, but stay away from the Polaroid Now Plus. This is immediately leaving. We never talk about it more than that. These are the cameras to pick up for Polaroid. I type modern day cameras, one set plus, Epic. Polaroid now, great. Polaroid One Step 2, honestly, is freaking fantastic. I love this camera. I get such good photos with this over the Polaroid now and even the One Step Plus. But it's a little bit hard to find, so go with the Polaroid now. Polaroid now is, you can find it readily available. Polaroid still offers this for sale on their website. You can go Best Buy, Target, Amazon, and find one. I would go with the Polaroid now if you're looking to get an i-type camera in 2023. Now let's move on to vintage cameras and there are two types of vintage cameras, SLR and box type. Let's start with the box type. Box type cameras come in a lot of flavors, I gotta tell you that, but they pretty much for the most part operate very similar. The only difference is there is an autofocus version and then there's a non-autofocus version. Other than that, they're pretty much the same. Now when I say autofocus, that just means it's zone focusing. It's not quite like it would be coming from a digital camera wise. There's two lenses in here and it chooses which one based on the distance. And with that said, I like to tell people to track down a Sun 660. It has autofocus, it has a flash, it shoots 600 film, so you can shoot this indoors and outside. And it's just pretty iconic looking, I think. However, there's companies out there like Retrospect that makes fun and themed cameras. You do pay quite a premium though for them, but they're really cool. And most of the time they don't have autofocus. They're just these 600 box type cameras, but they're pretty cool, like this one, a little Mickey Mouse. It's pretty fun. 
but you should be able to find a Sun 660 for like $50 online. Check eBay, check OfferUp, Facebook Marketplace, all the normal places. And this right here is my, <laughs> my pick that I tell people if they wanna get a vintage camera. It is really, really fun to use and it produces some really nice photos. Now let's move on to the vintage SLR cameras. What's an SLR camera you may be asking yourself? I'm sure you've heard of a DSLR camera, right? And what that means is it's a digital single lens reflex. And inside the camera, there's a mirror. So when you look through the little viewfinder, looking at that mirror, which that mirror is angled through the lens of your camera. So you're seeing what you're framing up. It's really, really nice. Well, if you drop the D, and that's what this is. This is a Polaroid SX70 camera, and it is an SLR. You can look right through the viewfinder and see what you're framing up through its glass lens. Yes, every other camera you've seen was plastic. So you get tack sharp, beautiful photos, and you can manually focus your camera like you would with a regular digital or even an old film type camera. There are multiple options of this camera available. There's a sonar version, which has true autofocus, not zone focusing, and then flash attachments and so on and so forth. However, it does shoot SX70 film. And I got videos I'll leave down below describing what SX70 versus 600 film is if you don't know. Just know, in my personal opinion, 600 film for me is better. But this shoots SX70 film and there's ways you can actually convert these cameras and turn them into 600 cameras. I even interviewed somebody on the new podcast, Just Another Podcast, in video and audio form. And I interviewed Dennis from Chromatic Parts. He does fun conversions to these cameras to be able to turn them into, well, just let's just say better than they were when they came out. But these will range from about 100 to a couple hundred dollars and beyond. But they're really nice, they fold down. Compact-ish. Now, if money is no object to you, there is a great alternative to these, and that is the Polaroid SLR 680, or what I like to call the beast. This is everything that I just described to you on the SX70. However, everything else is built into this. So it has a flash built in, it has autofocus built in, and it shoots 600 film just right out of the box. It was natively that way. It's really, really great. But these will range quite a lot in price, but realistically, be ready to pay anywhere from 350 to about $450 on the low end. They obviously can go for higher. Very sought after and kind of a rarer camera. What do you guys think? Do you have any more questions? Leave some comments down below. I'll be more than happy to answer them. And consider joining the Discord. It's free and you can ask all the questions you want over there. There's a great bunch of people with some great knowledge. We even do Zoom calls over in the members area too. So if you want to get one-on-one -on -one and chat, consider joining that too. Plus there's a lot of other perks with that. Did I leave any cameras out? Also leave them down in the comments below because I would love to check those out and know your thoughts. So thank you so much for watching. That's all I got for you today. Hopefully this was enjoyable and helpful and I'll see you in the next video. Now, get out there, make some art.